Always great chatting with El Guapo, who's coming off a big win this past week and a highlight reel finish at UFC Columbus. It's Chris Gutierrez back here on the program. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. A little, a little banged up, but, uh, you know, I'd rather have it this way than the other way. For sure. Where are you right now? I see you're in the car. Where are you heading to? Um, I'm sorry, what was that? I was just asking you where, where you're going right now. I see that you're in the car. Oh, I was about to go get some groceries. Nice. Okay, and you're back in Colorado, or did you go? Did you go back home to Texas? No, no, back in Colorado. Back in nice. Colorado. We're about to get ready to go to the Grand Canyon here in a little bit. Oh, cool. Well, good yeah, stuff. We're not going to take it too too much of time time away from uh, all the post fight stuff, which is great. Uh, just simple question, uh, man. Uh, was that the most satisfying win of your career? Highlight reel finish on a, on a really big card. Yeah, you know, anytime you can uh, keep the judges out of it, it's always a good thing, you know. Was there anything about him that surprised you that maybe you weren't expecting in the fight? His power. Man, he was strong. He hit so hard. He was very uh, heavy-handed. Okay. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, the spinning back fist, I'm sure that's something you're practicing a bit uh, in practice. Uh, were you surprised that you landed it, or was that part of the game plan is throwing some of those in the fight? Yeah, that was part of the plan is just, uh, you know, just throwing different things out there, you know, using them as fillers to see how he reacts to it. And, uh in the first round, I threw it, and uh, I think I, I was a little too close, and I think I caught him, like, on the side of the head or, like, the neck area. I didn't really, and then he slammed me, of course. Um, but after that, after that, I kind of realized the distance I needed to have, and so I was able to correct it, and that's what happened. So what's going through your head when you land it, fight's over? I mean, you just got, like, this highlight reel finish. What's going through your head at that point? Man, I honestly was like, man, I'm going to wake up in the back and they're going to say, okay, we're about to walk out. I, I honestly thought I was dreaming, you know? Really? You had like, to pinch yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Any moment I'm going to wake up and they're going to say, okay, man, it's time to make that walk. And I'm going to be like, damn, I got to go do this again. Yeah. Uh, there's that great moment after the fight of you going on the cage and you pulling uh, coach Mark Montoya up. Uh, I know Mark's been a big influence on your career. How cool is it to share that moment with him with, with a live crowd? Oh, man, it's always wonderful, you know, because, uh, you know, I always say, I think without him, I wouldn't be here. You know, he helped get my life back in a way and he helped get my life on track. And so, you know, he's like a big paramount in my life. So without him, man, I honestly wouldn't be here. So anytime we can celebrate something special like that, especially, you know, it takes a toll on both. You know, it's just not me going in there. You know, it it takes a toll on him, too. On everybody, you know, my, my other coaches and teammates as well, you know, that are there. How did you celebrate after the win? Uh, we went to we went to go get some something to eat, and then uh, we just went back to the hotel. Man, we just celebrated at the hotel, and you know, nothing, nothing too fancy. I, I was a little yeah. hurt. I was banged up, so uh, I couldn't. You know, I didn't want to go go too far. Okay, I, I guess you're going to probably see the doctor this week. Anything major uh, from the fight? Like how you feeling after after the fact? Oh no, no, no nothing, nothing like that. Where I got to go to the hospital, nothing like that. Just you know. Swollen hands, legs, you know, heads a little bit knotted up. But uh, other than that, man, it's you know it's part of the game. You gotta love it too. And you came away with some extra cash, getting the bonus. Uh, how did that feel? And what are you gonna be doing with the money? Oh man, of course, that was you know that changed my life in a way. Um, you know, uh, I'm gonna try to you know get some uh, some of my taxes paid up. You know, that's that's the main thing of it, really, just get some of my taxes paid up and just get caught up on other things that I needed to get, I needed to get caught up on. So nothing, okay. nothing special, you know, I can't, I'm not going to spend it on anything. I can't, you know, I got to, I got to use it, uh, I got to use it smart, you know. Yeah, no, no, I hear you on that. Um, has, uh, did you get a lot of messages on social media about people betting on you and, and winning? Because uh, you were an underdog going in, which I was surprised. Yeah, 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 of course, you know, you get... Like I said, uh, social media is like a double-edged sword. You know, you get the good ones, you get the bad ones. Of course, you get people that, that are like, you're lucky, you won. I wanted to see you get your face split open. And, and then you get ones that are like, man, so proud, you're inspiring, you know, keep pushing. Those are the ones that I, like, I pay attention to. Uh, yeah. But, of course, you, you do have people that message you, you want me money. And then you get some people that are like, you know, ask for well, you shouldn't have bet against the wrong person. That's all I tell him. Yeah. 
did you know that you were the underdog going in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm, the, I'm always the underdog in, in a lot of things that I do. That's just, I don't know, since I, was, since I was little, man, I've always been counted out. So, you know, I always look at it like um, the victory is twice as sweet. It's twice as sweet because at the end of the day, I know I never got, I never got anything handed to me. And for a fact, I had to work for it. So when I get the victory, it's like, okay, I know for a fact I had to dig deep and I had to earn it. So it's almost twice as nice, you know? Yeah. No, no, I hear you. Um, what has the overall feedback been? I'm sure that, you know, I don't even care too much about the stuff, but I'm sure the followers went up. Like, it seemed like everyone was really happy with that victory. So did you get a lot of, I'm sure you got a lot of positive feedback. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, the main thing was I did get a lot of positive things from people and and I said, that's the thing that I take, and that's the thing I take the heart the most. And, and that makes my heart smile, and it makes me happy is that I'm able to inspire and put a smile on other people. And that's that's what I live for. That's the, that's the part that makes that makes my heart smile. Have you or your management spoken to the UFC yet? They must have been really happy with uh, with not only the, the performance, but the finish. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, man, they were... They were happy that, you know, it's, uh, you know, anytime you get a finish in that, in the promotion, you know, there's not, you can't say, oh, the fight could have went this way, or we saw it this way. It was a definitive winner, you know, so I was happy I was able to put an exclamation mark on that. Yeah. Um, when are you looking to get back in there? Any any sort of ideal timeline for you to have that next fight? Uh, maybe like end of May, June area. I'd like to get back. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking around that time frame, you know, in about three to four months. Okay. And, and, you know, and I know in the in the post-fight speech you mentioned, you know, you'll just leave that up to your coaches or your management. But do you think it's finally time for a ranked opponent for you? You're on this nice unbeaten streak. I feel like you're not getting enough love uh, when it comes to the matchmakers because I think at this point you should get a ranked opponent. Well, you know, I, I uh, they asked me in the, in, the, in the interviews after the fight, uh, who would I like? And, you know, I told him either Frankie or uh, Sean O'Malley, you know. I mm. think that'll be a good fight stylistically and, you know, it'll be fun for the crowd as well. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm with you there. Um, you know, speaking of the rankings, uh, do you agree with, you know, someone like Marlon Marais or Rafael Sunsau still in the rankings when they've lost a number of key fights uh, in a row? Uh, do you feel like, you know, it's kind of taken up a spot for someone like you? No, I mean, they, they, they've earned that spot, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the things that those guys have done. They, they've earned it. Yeah, they, they're coming off, you know, some consecutive losses. But, man, the things they've done for this sport, you know. Um, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like, I don't, I don't know how to really give, a, you know, an answer to that. The only answer that I can say is that I feel that they've done so much for the sport that, you know, they're kind of solidified there for a little bit, you know. And if it takes them, you know, another, another, another fight, then – you know, they, they burned that. hundred percent. Yeah. I guess just my point of view is, you know, they've been getting finished in these fights. So that's where you're kind of yeah. like, eh, you know, like, you know, sh should they still be there? But, but I, I get it again, politically correct answer, but I, I like it. I, I, I dig it for sure. Don't want to ruffle any feathers. Um, what's the, uh, what, what's the plan for the rest of the week? We see you're in the car now. Uh, what would he have planned? Uh, man, you know, I've always wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. So that's where I'm heading to, uh, you know, here in a little bit. So, uh, and I decided to do that for, you know, for a couple of days and then uh, get back to work, you know. Okay. I'm only, I'm only taking a week, a week, week and a half off and uh, back to back to the grind. Who's making the trip with you to the Grand Canyon? Oh, uh, my girlfriend. Oh, cool. And the Nice. Okay. That, that, that's a good time. Um, always gotta, you know, always gotta mention this just cause you know, I know we always talk about it, but, uh, any update on your son? I, I know uh, you've been one of the, the real big advocates for, you know, single parenthood and just the lack of rights that you have any update there about your son. No, man, it's been three years, three years since I got to see my son. And like I said, you know, I got a, I got a team working on that, but man, it's so tedious. You know, it you get so, you get so far and then, realize you haven't even really done a dent to it so you know i'm just staying positive and continue to do what i got to do on that aspect and and still trying to you know make a dent in, in my career you know so i'm trying to do two things at once but uh, i finally uh feel like i'm able to juggle it pretty good and uh you know i'm gonna keep keep rocking with it but uh you know i'm not giving up on my son in that aspect it's just 
you know, it's, it's, it's taking its time, and uh, unfortunately, that's the way the that's the nature of that beast, you know. So I'm still at it. And and that goes for phone calls and stuff too. Like you don't even get to talk to him, right? I don't get this nothing. I don't even know what my son likes, what he sounds like, what kind of food he likes. It's so sad, man. It's so sad. It but, is. Uh, you know. Uh, you're doing everything you can. I, I know it's a, it's just a, it's a weird legal system that we have when it comes to that. I think I think we talked about this last time, but how many single dads reach out to you and, and sort of you know talk to you for advice because you know you're a guy that has a big platform and here you are dealing with something that I'm sure a lot of other fathers are dealing with. Of course, you know I get I get a lot of single fathers that um, that um, you know and, and believe it or not, man, I've I've gotten a lot of single mothers who reach out and are like, hey, I'm so sorry what you're going through. You know, I have a you know, it's crazy how a lot of people actually have fathers in their life that don't care, you know, and, and a lot of the response and the, the messages that I get are, you know, don't quit. I'm so, I hate that you're going through it, but it's so glad to see at least one father trying. And so, you know, it, that, um, you know, that, that cheered me up a little bit and, you know, still at it. Gonna make a sharp turn here. Uh, did you happen to see Will Smith smack Chris Rock last night? If so, what did you think of that? I do. I think Will Smith's a punk for that. Uh, you know, he wants to uh, get upset at Chris Rock, but he doesn't want to get upset at the guy who's bringing his wife. You know that yeah. obvious scene guy. And uh, you know, I understand he's got his own demons he's going through, but uh, you know, that's a toxic woman to be. They're in a toxic relationship. They need to go their separate ways. And I think that's going to cost him his Oscar. You know, and it should. So that's my point of view on it. Yeah, were you surprised that no one really said anything? That people just sort of went along with it. You know, he did the speech and everything, and it was just like nothing happened. Yeah, I think that was really. I think they kind of hung Chris Rock out to dry mm -hmm. on that. Man, Chris Rock is a. He's an amazing human for that because I would have slammed Will Smith through his. I would have drove his face through that ground. And, uh, that's like a champ and uh you know it is what it is I, but i do hope that will gets the help he needs you know you can tell he's definitely yeah. going through some mental things but at the same time um it, it, the, my point of view was you slapped chris rock but you didn't slap the guy who caused the marriage to go south you know yeah no no well said and, and i do have one last question uh again we're gonna end here on, on a cool note uh what's the best meal you're gonna have this week or you have had so far since the fight because i know you gotta cut weight is there like a particular meal you look forward to uh, food food in general man um <laughs> anything yeah but you know I, yeah anything but honestly man like my mom's cooking is what i really uh is what i really miss and i uh I think she'll be coming up here here pretty soon to visit, and so I'm excited for that. Chris, thanks so much for the time, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, enjoy the Grand Canyon. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, of course, social media. You can find me on uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Chris Gutierrez, El Guapo, MMA. Um, I want to thank my team, Factory X, my management team, Meridian Sports, and uh, you know a couple sponsors, uh, Brandon Brown's True Services. Uh, thank you guys for helping, and uh, Hugo McGregor in you with their crypto. They've been doing a lot of good things, helping fighters out. So I want to help them. I want to give them a shout out too for jumping on and helping. So thank you guys, and thank cool. you as well All for right, getting man. me on.